Hello again, this is uh, Skip McCauley, Victor Echo 6, Bravo, Golf Tango. This is another short video, I hope, of uh, what it takes to get things set up to get ready for the 9 centimeter contest on uh, the weekend of March 2024. It was, uh, yeah, interesting, lots of fun. Before I took the feed out to the dish, there's a few things I wanted to check and uh, meant tearing it down a little bit and hooking it up to the test gear in the shack. So in this next part of the video, you can see how it uh, comes apart to uh, hook the amplifier up to some test gear to uh, do some testing. The main thing I wanted to try was uh, a new detector diode I had for the output of the amplifier, which would uh, drive the output indication on the Visual Basic screen. It was a new one I just acquired, and I wanted to test it and see if it was going to work. Now, to make this video a little shorter, I had already taken some bolts and washers off, and... Uh, disconnected some connectors so things would come apart a little smoother to keep this video shorter hopefully. I build these uh, feeds in kind of a modular design so they're easy to be taken apart and worked on as you'll see in this uh, next little part here the uh, the whole feed horn waveguard section it comes off in one modular piece with uh, four little nuts that hold the bracket onto the main mounting plate and disconnecting the RF connections and a few uh, wires on that terminal strip the the feed horn, the preamp, and the uh, isolation relay comes off in one chunk, so it's uh, easy now to hook up the uh, test gear to the amplifier. This next video, I'm going to show you the uh, rundown and how everything's set up on the workbench here to test this thing. I had a spectrum analyzer hooked up and running just to make sure the uh, homemade transverter I used for a signal source was on frequency. And uh, this IFR generator, again, is uh, was providing the uh, 144 megahertz IF drive for the transverter. As before, the output of the amplifier is going through a 20 dB attenuator into the uh, power meter to uh, show me the uh, output power of the whole thing. And then this uh, little gray box is the uh, control test box I use for operating the control circuitry of the amplifier and the feed assembly itself. Then the visual basic screen is where I'm uh, looking at the output power indication to match up with this new detector diode. This gray enclosure is the uh, power supply for the amplifier. It's the uh, unit that I built that uh, is switchable over to 32 volts and provides the uh, high current supply for the amplifier itself. It's also switchable over to 50 volts for the 6 centimeter amplifier. So this is one of the videos of uh, testing amplifier. Uh, believe it or not, uh, one detector died was no good. So I put in a second one and it uh, sort of worked. I tried to sync these uh, videos together, but there's just no way I can get them to line up, so I'm going to show them separately. But in this video, as you can see, the, uh, uh, the diagnostic screen here showing when the amplifier starts coming up. You can see the current uh, draw into two amps and uh, the output meter going up and... Uh, how it all works and always how things are indicated when it's being keyed, etc, etc. The actual meter display on this screen here for the output is actually calculated from the current draw. And uh, the numbers are fed into the Visual Basic program that way. Uh, the detector dial worked, but it created some grief later on, as uh, I'll explain. Uh, here's a video of the actual power meter itself. Um, like I said, I couldn't sync these up with each other. And it's pretty tough when you're using the same camera and taking different shots at different times, but it, it shows you what it'll do, and more. I put the feed all back together, took it outside in the garage and wrapped it up for weather, and then uh, installed it on the dish. I've shown some of this on other videos, but uh, you can appreciate what it's like when the weather's like this. It was pretty decent today. It was only about minus 12, minus 13 centigrade. So it uh, still got cold on the fingers. So I got everything together, went up the elevator, and uh, started installing it. The plastic wrap uh, makes it a bit difficult to get at the... Uh, clamping bolts to hold it in place. It's a, it's a necessary evil. Unfortunately, it does block uh, airflow, so I, I do have a heating problem, and it's something i got to work out yet. I will speed this part up a little bit. It's kind of boring. 
not much room on top of the elevator for the camera, so all you're going to see is the back of my head, so I figure we'll uh, speed her up. Hooking up the uh, transmit heliax to the uh, transmit port on the feed right now. Then hooking up the receive uh, helix to the uh, output of the preamp. Next uh, is to hook up the uh, associated cables, the 32 volt line for the amplifier and then the two control cables and then the uh, serial data line that feeds all the uh, information back to the ham shack. I used to hook all these lines just into that long terminal strip on the back of the feed tray, but uh, I since got smart and hooked up these speed connectors. It still takes a while to do it all though. Again, that god awful sound is the winch on the elevator uh, lowering me down so I can get at the interface box. All the feeds I have for the various bands use the same cables, just that uh, some of the feeds are more complex and they take more cables. And uh, some only take a single cable, but uh, it's a lot easier than just using terminal strips, that's for sure. That was the last cable, finally. Until I could think of a better way of doing this, this is all I've got to keep the snow and the rain in the summertime off the feed. I just merely pull the plastic down and then uh, wrap it up with some tape. Like I said earlier, it uh, wrapped up on plastic like this, it does restrict airflow to the fan, so the uh, amplifier does tend to get uh, warm. Even in this minus 10 degrees centigrade, I was surprised how warm it stayed. At this point, I uh, usually pulled another sheet of plastic out of my coat and do a secondary wrap over the end connector there, but uh, I can't find it. And then I realized it's down on the ground. So uh, that was the end of that. So down I go. Back into the ham shack where it's uh, toasty warm. Oh, this video is going to be too short. So <laughs> here's the layout of the shack for 9 centimeter operation. The uh, small shelf just above the text in the rack on the left is where the 9 centimeter transverter is. It's also the uh, control of sequencer for both 6 and 9 centimeter uh, operations. The transverter is a Coons unit. 
and uh, the little silver box just to the right of it is a uh, external uh, 10 megahertz reference uh, control system for the crystal inside the transverter to keep it locked so it doesn't drift it's something I put together and it works not too bad actually I'm kind of surprised myself the pick circuit up on the top middle is the uh, sequencer circuit for both six and nine centimeters and uh, then there's the relay system down on the bottom left and that just uh, merely switches the IFs and outputs between the nine centimeter transverter and the six centimeter IF coming in which directs it directly straight out again to the uh, radial since the six centimeter transverter is, is up on the feed. This shows the back of the uh, transverter shelf all the various connections and uh, junction points. Now one thing you'll notice that there is no amplifier of any kind on this shelf for uh, nine centimeters. Believe it or not the uh, what is it 250 milliwatts out of the Coons transverter goes all the way out of the shack down 120 some odd feet of 7-8 heliacs and then up the flexible cable up to the feed and it uh, it just has enough drive to hit the amplifier up there with those two preamps or two drivers to run the uh, amplifier up to 100 watts only so uh, I need more drive and I'm working on that so moving along is uh, something fairly new in the shack here is this Agilent transmitter tester picked up this unit quite cheap and uh, I use it as a station monitor and just to monitor the uh, transmitter signals it just simply uses a rubber duck in the back to uh, pick up the signals uh, even from the dish at this frequency then moving along is the three main monitors that are used for just about all the bands that I use for uh, moon bouncing. First there's the feed diagnostic screen that you've seen before and uh, there's actually a sequencer status uh, display in behind it that I uh, don't have shown here. Next in line for the monitors is the uh, closed circuit television camera which uh, I keep an eye on things out there. This monitor is showing the dish control and auto tracking setup for the dish itself. Then there's the Nova screen, which I still like the best for uh, giving me moon data, and it, I like the maps on it to show me uh, what part of the world is in view. Superimposed on it is the uh, small VB display that uh, gives me the status off the 32 volt power supply that's hanging out in the dish stand for the uh, amplifier. Going along here, the bottom on the shelf is the Kenwood TS2000, which I have a IF tap coming out, which uh, provides signal for the HD SDR screen uh, I use as a band scope. Finally, the last rack is where the uh, the uh, controllers for the various antennas and my mainly the dish control, the PIC circuits. And on top of the rack is the uh, computer for the Nova data and all the other VB screens. And then the monitor at the top is the uh, dish status monitor, which shows me uh, all various things of what's going on with the dish itself, uh, motor voltages, motor currents, temperatures, and uh, so forth. First thing on the agenda I do is see if the uh, isolation relay and the preamp is working up on the feed for receiving. First thing I have to do is uh, get the sequencer out of auto mode into manual mode so I can flip the relay switch on and off. All the displays are going into alarm mode because it's indicating that the manual sequence status is now in manual mode. Uh, this way the sequencer is locked out of going to transmit whatsoever. There's, there's no way at all I can uh, turn the transmitter on and blow the preamp up uh, doing it this way. So I swing the dish off any noise source to get a cold sky reading and zero the uh, noise meter. This uh, 9 centimeter band is really nice for this. It's really quiet. So now that the sequencer is in manual mode, I take the uh, relay control switch and flip it on, which is actually switching the preamp over to the termination resistor up top. The needle moves up to almost 6 dB, which is the noise that it's measuring that's being emitted by the termination resistor up top. This is a good value to remember. I have it written down in my notes, and this is how I can tell if the uh, preamp and the relay is uh, working the way it's supposed to. I throw the switch again and now the preamp is connected to the feed horn and I'm measuring the cold sky once more. So that part of it all checks out. Now that you know the preamp and uh, the receive system is working, we'll show you how we can use the noise meter to peak on the moon.
So I've got the dish on the moon already, just using Nova. So I've uh, taken the offset and I've swung the dish off about five degrees. And then I'll put it back on auto control and let it come back and you'll see the uh, moon, mo moon noise meter uh, pick it up and we'll peak on it. Uh, for this test I have the uh, noise meter set for 2 dB full scale. The desired disposition we want where the moon is going to be is right around 101 degrees. So when we get close to it with the actual and the yellow display then you'll see the meter start to peak. And there's the moon noise which is about 0.8 of a dB over the uh, zero cold sky reading. There I tried peaking it a little bit and it started to drop so uh, it went back up and that's all we're going to get, 0.8 of a dB. Here's the same test once more. This time we're going to use a one decibel scale and uh, it, the meter is getting real sensitive at this uh, range. You see it's really touchy to uh, get it zeroed. So I'll swing the dish back over to it again and uh, here it's starting. You can see the noise starting to pick up. So one little higher on this scale, uh, maybe another 0.1 of a decibel higher. I usually don't worry about the actual reading when I'm uh, working the moon. I just keep it uh, needle in the center and I just peek on it to keep the dish centered on the moon. Noise meters are very handy. The grand finale. Well, that's all there is for 9 centimeters. I've flogged uh, this horse enough. I hope you found some of this interesting. Um, a lot of it's the same as the other frequencies and the videos I've posted up here. Yeah, but anyways, uh, thanks for watching. 73's from Skip, Victor Echo 6, Bravo, Golf Tangle.